So this is our first show in like six months. Yes, correct. And a lot has happened in those six months. Uh, for me, I graduated film school, got accepted at another film school, moved to Los Angeles, started to get some connections to work in the film industry, and then the film industry shut down. <laughs> um, I've watched a shit ton of movies in the past month and a half, two months, and... Yeah, that's kind of where we're picking it up. How was The Man Who Fell to Earth? I know you said you watched that. How was it? It uh, It's pretty trippy. Like It's it's broad concept science fiction, which uh, okay. I enjoy a little, uh, little bit. Um, David Bowie's David Bowie. Like okay. he's, uh, I, I'm not going to say he's like good or bad. Like He's being David Bowie, and it works. <laughs> um <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's like, have you ever seen the Andromeda Strain? Is that a real thing? Yeah, it's a real movie. No, never heard of it. Um, oh, well, you've seen two thousand one, right? I've seen the sequel, the which I've heard is better. Two thousand and what ten? Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen two thousand ten. I'm kidding. I have seen 2001. I actually, I watched it recently, like two days ago. I, yeah, I watched it like a week and a half or two weeks ago. Do you think it holds up? I was bored. Me too. I, I, <laughs> Me I, too. I, I think the last time I found 2001 enjoyable was like 10 years ago. I like how it starts with like yeah. just pitch black with like three minutes of music. And I'm like, I'm already mm -hmm. pissed off. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, you know, I like the, the slow, boring science fiction, but I don't like, like, like the first act of the movie, you know, is just primitives and the creation of God and how humans started to learn how to use tools and shit. I love that stuff. Right. It takes me, it takes a while to kind of really get into the second act because, it's not connected, right? And nothing really happens for another thirty minutes. And all the interesting shits when they're on the satellite, living their life, doing their things, and Hal just loses his mind. Yep. That's so great. The third act of the movie is where I really get fucking angry. I don't even really. I I don't. I don't get it. I'm sure that's common for people, but like I understand the theme of like technology and like what we use it for but then he's like a big baby at the end yeah like third act reminded me of uh interstellar where you know mcconaughey's going through his own personal universe to go back in time or whatever that's what it reminded me of but that transition takes so goddamn long yeah like it's like a whole 10 minutes of just going through the doctor who opening yeah i mean i you know, I enjoy 2001 for like a visual level, but it's, you know, it's no Captain Marvel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Disney, uh, I saw Rise of Skywalker. Finally, you saw it. What'd you think? It broke me. Good. I'm glad. Like, I, I, uh, well, it's funny. It's like I've been doing like almost nothing but like watching... Clone Wars and playing old Star Wars games after watching Rise of Skywalker because I felt like there was a hole that needed good stories. Yeah. You know? Because, like, that story was terrible. It's just reneging on everything that Last Jedi did. I know. Like, and. Like, That's all it is. Neat. And I, I, I'm really. I don't know why I am because I shouldn't be. But I, I really felt that Disney should know better in giving a character, like, more than one character, a serious case of the not gaze. <laughs> Why would you think that? Well, I mean, because none of the uh, Marvel movies 
feel uh-huh. forced in that way, you know? Right. Like, there are no gay characters. There's really no LGBT character at all in a Marvel movie, but I don't feel that they're going out of their way to not have a gay character. Like, they're moving so fast and the stories are so good that I don't mind, you know? Right. It's the it's the fact that in The Rise of Skywalker, Poe Dameron and Finn keep looking at each other like they want to make out the entire time. And that at least would have been something. Old flames of theirs. Yeah, yeah. Like w- they don't do anything. Like Harry Russell, the great Harry Russell, is just kind of there to make sh- to make Poe not gay. When you say great Harry Russell, are you using finger quotes? No, I think she's absolutely wonderful in the Americans. Okay, so I was going to say in what I've never seen that show. It's great. It's a great. I mainly movie. know her. I mainly know her from an episode of Married with Children where she is like a college student that runs a radio station. Hmm. That's about it. And this. So those two things. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's amazing in the Americans, Uh, but it's, she's, she's, she doesn't do anything in Rise of Skywalker. She's just there to make Poe not gay. And I would have like, preferred something like when it ends i'm like i have no idea what happened to these characters like it just ends with poe being like huh are we gonna we're gonna hook up and then she says no and i'm like did, so what did he what did he do after that like what <laughs> what happened to these characters i know but like it, it's it's so like every single part of that movie is just questionable like who who's kylo ren fighting at the beginning of the movie doesn't matter oh. Uh, so like (laughs) I love how like you know Darth Sidious is all like I am the Sith you cannot destroy me and which you know he's like it's his spirit his soul or whatever that keeps coming back so is that what it was his well that's like what I got out of it like because he's died you know he keeps saying he's died several times and his soul just inhabits things like like you know all the Snokes and everything, and <laughs> how he died in the Death Star, right? So when Ray destroys his body, he's not really dead, right? That's how I took it, like he could just because like when he dies, I'm like, okay, he's got to come back, he's got to come back, so that the soul can be. Oh, 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 it's over. <laughs> I wish when that lady who asked for Ray's like name and like social security number and all that stuff, oh, God. I wish when that lady was like, Ray, what? She was like, Ray Palpatine. And then her eyes like flash yellow and it just cuts out right there. That would have been a fun ending. I, <laughs> and like, there's dude, there's so much shit from like the extended universe that I know because I like star Wars, but I, that's not acceptable to bring into the third act of a story. Like, What's a Sith holocron? I don't know. What's a yellow lightsaber? I don't know. Like, that that's not acceptable to just bring up and never talk about. When did you see it? Um, I saw it three weeks ago. Okay. I, I don't know. I've had longer to sit on it, I guess, because I saw it when it first came out. I'm just tired with it. Like, I don't care. I do not care <laughs> about that movie at all. I will never probably watch it again on my own. Um, yeah. There's nothing in it for me. I like Palpatine's red shirt at the end, but that's about it. Yeah, I, I love Palpatine because he's he's evil and he loves it. It's hard. He's just doing the exact that. same shit. <laughs> it, and I did like yeah I I was actually like shedding like getting a little like worked up because I was so angry like at that what I had just watched like the movie was just going so fast like they're talking so fast you know like uh-huh. this is comedy isn't it it's fun <laughs> if they speak fast especially when Poe Dameron looks at the camera and says that this is comedy right right <laughs> this is this is comedy for you people they can fly now they can fly now did you know they can fly now they can fly now. I saw Rise of Skywalker. I've seen it once in theaters for free, mm-hmm. and I was upset. But I paid to see Cats twice, and I loved both experiences. See, those, that's a different experience, though. 
Like Cats was a better film for me than like the last Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah, and Cats doesn't really have a plot. And they're not trying to have one either. It's just cats doing crazy <laughs> cat stuff. Um Yeah, I I've I've been finish or watching uh the Clone Wars television show because the last season's out and it's really good. I'm not gonna watch um, it. Dude, honestly, like if you're not if you're not a Star Wars fan or if like your fandom is waning, it's probably for the best. <laughs> I think I think I used to be of the films, but now I'm just just exhausted with it. Yeah, I understand that. Good. Thank you, JJ Abrams. <sighs> Boy. And and it dude, it's not just Star Wars. Star Trek is also like dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm, I'm, I'm watching like uh, you know, the old show, like you know, original series and Next Gen. Uh-huh. And I love them. They Next Gen is far better than I remember it being. Uh-huh. Um, but Picard is one of the worst experiences I've had. I watched I think three episodes, and I was just going, oh, yeah, I don't understand why is why is the Federation a bunch of racists now. I'm not going to blame J.J. Abrams for that, but I do find it funny that, like, I, they should call him, like, the, the closer, because he just will come in and just destroy properties. Like, if you are ready for a property to be done, just bring J.J. Abrams in, and he'll, like, totally screw the ending and mess it all up. Well, I mean, like, I, I like the Star Trek movie, the reboot movie. I like it. I think it's really fun. I think it's a great action movie. Like, I'm Do you like Into Darkness? J.J. Abrams can can make a great start to a series. Right. But he cannot finish a story to save his life. You see that he's, like, doing some shows for HBO Max? What is HBO Max? Like, I don't see a difference between it and <laughs> HBO Now. Um, if you get HBO Max, it's just HBO, um, but some guy named Max comes to your house and, like, rubs your belly <laughs> while you watch your content? <laughs> It's just Mystery Science Theater with a guy named Max. But you don't, like, he just shows up. <laughs> Randomly. You don't even get to pick what show you're watching. He'll just be like, we're watching this now. And you're like, oh, okay. I don't like it, but okay. <laughs> but he's doing, uh, J.J. Abrams is doing um, a Justice League Dark show and then a show about the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Isn't, isn't, the current DC stuff just uh, Justice League Dark? <laughs> Isn't it all just dark and gritty and boring and awful? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see Aquaman, so maybe not. But but yeah, basically. I yeah, I haven't seen Aquaman. Uh, I think that's the only one I haven't seen yet. Because I saw Captain Marvel and it was... Or Shazam. And it was fine. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not it's not great. It's it's fine. It, I, I laughed a couple times. Do you care about an Overlook TV show? No. Did you watch uh, Doctor Sleep? I've been meaning to, and I haven't. I've been watching every other movie in existence. Okay. I I like Doctor Sleep, but, like, nobody saw it, so I don't know what business they think an Overlook show could could make, but, I mean, I don't know if they have, like, a love story. It's like an anthology episode, an anthology TV series. And each episode focuses on, like, a different ghost. I just want a romantic comedy about the old guy and the chubby guy in the dog suit. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like, get Jack Black to play the dog suit guy. And, like, Adrian Brody to play the guy that he's blowing. And just a cute romantic comedy about them falling in love and being into weird animal play shit. I would watch that. <laughs> I'd watch the hell out of it. Like... I mean, I I watched like the first season and a half or so of Bates Motel, and I got bored. <laughs> so if it's if it's something different than than that, I, I'll I'll give it a good three episode try. Um, what other news stories do I have? I wrote that Westworld got renewed. Do you care? Um, I saw that it got renewed. I don't know if I care because I I loved the first season and then. All anyone ever did was shit on the second season and about how much it doesn't make any sense. Right. So I kind of avoided it. Okay, season three is pretty solid. 
But I, I read that they have like a six season deal with HBO. So I don't know if that means they can just keep going even if it, nobody's watching it. I don't know. I mean, HBO's got Game of Thrones money still, so. Still. They can kind of do whatever they want. And you like the last season, right? Um, I don't know. I've kind of cooled down on it, on the, like, the entire show. It's like, I'm not going to say that, you know, the show's bad, because it's not. It's just, it's just a rushed last season and a half, really. <laughs> it's, it's weird to me that, like, you know, this, the last season was so divisive, right? Yeah. And we're in a time, though, where, like, everybody is fine with them making continuities that ignore things that we don't like and it's not like any of the game of thrones actors are doing anything i'm really surprised that like hbo hasn't been like we're just going to redo the last season and ignore what you already saw yeah i that does bother me that this happens in television shows and sequels you know just just erase what we just saw as if it didn't happen i think that's lazy as fuck I really think it's super lazy. Okay, well, you watched the entirety of the Halloween series, and you tell me where they could have gone with things. All right, look, we're not we're we're not going to go there. It's not my job to <laughs> to write sequels. <laughs> it, it's just my job to say, "Come on now, um, <laughs> come on, guys." But I, I do find it absolutely fascinating how Game of Thrones was a cultural like Mount Everest. And then the second it was over, people stopped talking about it. And we just moved on. It was was bad. (laughs) Because it was bad. (laughs) It's just so interesting. Like no one talks about it. Not like, Oh, remember how awesome game of Thrones was? I think it's because like we got closure because it ended, but no one liked it. So we're just like, let's just not, (laughs) I'm uncomfortable talking about it. I don't even want to talk about it, like, to recommend to people. Yeah, I don't either, because it is kind of, like, as great as it is for such a long time, it ends just so quickly, you don't feel satisfied. (laughs) It's essentially as if, like, you had a really cool uncle, but then he, like, was arrested for pedophilia, and your friends are like, hey, whatever happened to your uncle, man? You ever talk about him? And you're like, yeah, he's, uh, he's... He's doing his own thing, you know? I don't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, you're just uncomfortable talking about it now. Yeah. Um, I started watching Twin Peaks again. Really? I love I loved David Lynch. I think I've seen everything except for uh, Inland Empire by David Lynch now. You're watching the TV show from the beginning? Yep, I am halfway through the second season. It's bad, isn't it? I love Twin Peaks. No, no, no. The second season is bad. Oh, uh, I don't think so. Uh, it just feels more soap opera-y. Did they already reveal who killed Laura Palmer? Yeah. Okay, yeah, after that, the show's terrible, basically, until the finale. Yeah, the show, it, it feels... like I, I, I feel like... David Lynch didn't exactly know where he was going. No, he left. After he left? Yeah, he basically left the show after they revealed Laura Palmer's killer. He comes back in a little bit to play uh, Gordon Cole, but he's basically yeah. gone um, from a creative standpoint until the finale. Really? Yeah. And you'll know, like, has James Hurley left Twin Peaks yet? No, uh, James is about to leave. Okay, yeah. He sucks. <laughs> he, yeah, like, okay, just wait. I'm excited to hear what you think about it, because it's, it's hard to get through. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've already committed to, you know, watching all of season two, Firewalk with me, and then the third season. Okay, no, I love Twin Peaks, too. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been watching a lot of, like, you know, like, atmospheric, broad, concept stuff like uh david lynch and other like weird science fictiony 70 60 shit i'm excited to know what you think of the third season because i love the third season but a lot of people really don't like it so i'm curious to know what you'll mm-hmm. think of it um yeah i i don't know man i, I, I 
I feel like at any given point, I'm just like ready to just suck David Lynch's dick and just be like, yep, no, it's great. Just give it to me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, when you, when you see season three, the true test of your metal will be proven. All right. Let's see. What else have I do? Yeah. I don't know. I I don't I can't even like say how much I've been watching movies because I've been watching more movies than I have television shows recently. Uh Did you ever finish Fargo season three? Uh, no. And I hate you. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. There's just there's a lot of good shit to watch, and I have the uh my or my my roommate Matt has the uh, Criterion uh app. Mhm. So we're watching a lot of shit from that. Speaking of Criterion. Um, you see they're going to put uh, 31 in the Criterion Collection? They are not going to do that. No, they're not. I just wanted to segue into it because I don't have anything else to talk about. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to really talk about other than like what we've been watching or doing. Because mm-hmm. Hollywood shut down. There's no news. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't know. Do you want to roll into it? Yeah, let's get into it. All right. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that at about the 20 minute mark mm-hmm. right right when uh the second act is about to get going i figured out exactly what 31 is okay it is the running man meets saw but not saw 1 like more like saw 6 <laughs> in that it sucks <laughs> cuz it's just the running man <laughs> How would, what do you, let's describe the plot. Explain what the story is. Um, these unlikable people who feel <laughs> like uh, early renditions of Devil's Rejects characters are riding in a tour bus of some kind. You don't, <laughs> like, you guess that they're carnies, but yeah. like weird Rob Zombie carnies. Um, and they're all unlikable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um they I I'll get I'll get to what I'm going to say next later but uh so they're in this they're in their bus then they go to fill up with gas and they mm-hmm. wind up at this place which with like really weird scary scarecrows and then yeah. they go all like we should investigate. Yeah. And then half of them die. And then the other half is brought to, like, this weird eyes wide shut house where they get thrown into the running man game to where they're trying to escape, but there's no, like, try to escape and win thing. It, right. It's just die. I don't know. <laughs> and, like, so there's, like, five characters. One of them is David Grohl um, from wait, the Foo Fighters. Wait, that's who that was? No, it just looks exactly like him, though. Oh, see, I I was calling him Skinny Haig the whole movie, because he looks a lot like Sid Haig, but young and youth, youth and skinny. <laughs> and happier. So you have David Grohl, you have a weathered, wispy scarecrow of a woman, who I guess is supposed to be, like, the leader. Yeah. They're carnies. You're right, they're carny. Traveling carnies. Um... And then there's, like, two token black guys. One of them dies immediately, and the other one has, like, a really bad Jamaican accent. I thought it was Cajun. <laughs> Whatever. And then... <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it is. <laughs> then the last one is Rob Zombie's wife, who's in all of his movies. Sharon Moon Zombie is incredibly beautiful, but I highly suspect that meth just goes in and out of their house. And they're being... They're dropped in this maze, kind of like what you said, and they have to survive, and they're being chased by the heads, which are like five clowns, but it's not its not at once, it's like levels, they face off against a clown per round. Yeah, they're just champions from The Running Man. They all but have like, a different theme, and they're trying to kill the people running. But like, the, the clowns are easily defeatable if the main characters yeah. were just fighting them as a group. Yeah, working together. The first one, Sickhead, please describe him. Uh, Sickhead is a midget Nazi who speaks mostly in Spanish. With no subtitles. No subtitles. 
Uh, which and he is, just has I feel like, like is a big yeah, it's a big missed opportunity because Cherry Moon Zombie also speaks Spanish, <laughs> but you don't know what they're saying, which I feel like you we should because I think there's something interesting going on in that conversation. I want you to think feel as gross as I want you to think real hard stuff. about what you just said. Oh, I know, I know what I just said, and I know yeah. who I know what movie we're talking about. I'm just saying that little extra bit that might be good. I don't know. It's the mystery because we have no idea what they're saying. Kate just said there might be something <laughs> good in the dialogue that's spoken in Spanish, but in English there are some <laughs> lines such as, and I wrote these lines down. Quote: The old man's dick. The old bastard's jizz was the frosting. That's one quote. Um, another quote. Get ready to grow a pair, big baby. One good quote. Uh, blows my marbles like a 50 cent skank. And then my final quote that I wrote that I, I loved is, because uh, Rob Zombie, if you watch enough of his movies, he has like disturbing jokes that aren't funny, but he'll just like stop the movie to do them. You have a dream sequence of dead characters, and one says, What is sicker than fucking a pregnant bitch? Getting a blowjob from the baby. Yeah, I... I I would have... To me, like, the biggest problem with uh, the dialogue is that every single... Like, this... It's like ADHD dialogue. Like yeah. the characters will say something, and then someone has to come in, come in with like something that Rob Zombie thinks is funny. Right. When the line is just gross and vile on its own, it didn't need it. <laughs> but then someone's like, "Ah, his dick," or some something, you know, Rob Zombie. Yeah, you get it, Rob uh, Zombie. I, I I feel like the dialogue would have been delivered better if it was if it felt like Escape from New York or something. If it was like an over the top dark cartoon and no one was taking it seriously because i feel like everyone was taking this way too seriously and i just i i would have forgiven so much of it if it was just over the top i feel like malcolm mcdowell doesn't take anything seriously and like oh, yeah and he, he hasn't was, in like 20 years he was a joy <laughs> he's the best part of the movie right yeah i i love every scene he's in he's only yeah. in like four or five but god damn he's so fun Malcolm McDowell and these two other women are wearing, like, Victorian garb, and they're the ones that are, like, betting on the people. But, again, it's just Malcolm McDowell. Like, he doesn't care. He just showed up for a sandwich, yeah. wore the wig, said the lines, and left. Yeah. So, of the clowns, we have Sickhead, who, like you said, is a dwarf, or yeah. who's, like, with Nazi garb and, like, two knives but for some reason, like, five grown adults can't just take him on at once and kill him? I know. Then you have Psycho and Schizo Head, who are, like, two brothers in, like, women's lingerie stockings, but clown makeup. Yeah. yeah. Each one has a chainsaw. And again, I feel like, f by this point, the one token black guy has died. I still feel like four people, four grown, able-bodied people, should have been able to take these guys out. Yeah, like, these people kept saying that, oh, we're victims too, we're victims too, almost like the Saw movies. Right. But we never get to explore that, because you don't trust any of these crazy people enough to ask them, wait, are you serious? <laughs> wait a minute, say what? <laughs> yeah, like, you, we're just like, eh, fuck them. Eh, kill them. <laughs> if you were chased by a chainsaw guy, would it matter? No, no, and like I'm glad they did that, but as far as a movie goes, you're supposed to explore that. <laughs> so then after Psycho and Schizo, you have Sex Head and Death Head. And Which should have been reversed. Death Head is like an elderly tall man, who again, super easy to beat. And then Sex Head is like a, a really short, attractive oh, woman. Do you know who Sex Head was? Cause I know, cause I've seen her in, uh, I've I've seen her behind the scenes stuff. Well, she's Tommy Pickles. Yep, yep. She's the voice of Tommy Pickles and Buttercup from uh, Powerpuff, Girls. Powerpuff Girls. She's everyone's childhood voice actor. She's also in uh, Devil's Rejects. Yeah, and she's she's fun. She's awesome. And, and she's in Pee Wee's Big like, Adventure. She... And what? Pee Wee's Big Adventure. 
She is, isn't she? You remember uh, Deathhead? You know what he was playing? Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I kept looking at him like he looks familiar to me, but I couldn't. Like all of these people look familiar, but like people you haven't seen in like forever. Well, Deathhead was in a movie we reviewed. The Do Over. What? The Do Over. Or was it? No, not the Do Over. Maybe he was in the Cobbler Shoes, some crappy Adam Sandler movie. What was the Do Over? Where Adam Sandler and David Spade restart their life or something. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. It doesn't matter. So after Sex Head and Death Head, there's, like, Doom Head. But before they bring in Doom Head, they explain that, like, Death Head was apparently the closer, even though, again, he's, like, an elderly man. Yeah. But then they bring in Doom Head, who's supposed to be the big bad. What'd you think of him? Um, uh... So I I have a couple things that I I was thinking the entire time he was on screen. Uh huh. Um, it's all of these people felt like like bad guys from Bioshock. <laughs> okay. Like they all felt like they were crazy, like weird libertarian characters from the game Bioshock, living in Rapture. Or people who worked for Joe Exotic and Tiger King. Yeah, like they're they're all themed. Yeah. Like in Bioshock, they're all themed. They all like are like artistic and in their killing, like in Bioshock, and they all say these really vile, awful things. Um, but Doomhead reminded me so much of like the first boss you fight in Bioshock. He says like all these awful things, and he's like super skinny and ripped. Uh huh. So you know he's definitely like a big bad. You know he's like he's someone you got to take care of because he's skinny and agile. Right. Um, his tattoo on his back looked like a painted like it was painted on because it rippled. <laughs> like cause, you know because it wrinkled real easily, not right. like a regular tattoo does. Um, which come on, man, get a henna tattoo. I, I don't understand. He has two. Uh, technically, he has two intros. Yeah, the very opening of the movie. The very opening where he, like, kills a priest, and, like, it's an effective opening for a character, I guess. If it just goes on too long. Yeah, and his makeup changes in between shots, if you notice. Oh, dude, I noticed that shit so yeah. <laughs> I go, his makeup's different. Yep. His makeup's different. Yep. Oh, he's got more white on his face. Yeah. His second intro is basically the most Rob Zombie thing that's ever been put to screen. It's him having violent oh, sex yeah. with a woman while Nosferatu is playing on a screen in the background. Yeah, I uh, going through film school a lot, like and like watching all these like old, old, you know, uh, silent movies. Rob Zombie really loves them. Like he he did uh, Dr. Caligari for Dead Girl, uh. the music video. Like he loves this shit. So the fact that Nosferatu is playing was not a surprise to me. <laughs> That's basically like all his characters that are murderers in his movies are basically like white trash people who love black and white films and have like just dirty senses of humor. That's like all of his characters. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, you know, his bad tattoo, he's super skinny and ripped. He... I guess loves New 52 Joker because he's over the top violent, not funny, <laughs> and wears the same suit. He also, and again, like, he's supposed to be like your closer, your big guy. He just runs at him with a knife, with like two knives. Yeah. He's not particularly quick. He's not particularly <laughs> agile. Again, I feel like if those two people at the end had stuck together, they could have easily taken him. Well, what was really funny is uh, I was watching this with uh, with Matt, and each of these killers really milk this shit before they finally kill people. Yeah. And as soon as Doomhead enters the hallway, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta pee. They're gonna milk it, so I'm gonna go. I get back, and he killed the person. Like, that was the quickest kill in the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I missed it. And we just like, well, we didn't like rewind it. We just kept going. You didn't. It was it when he kills the old haggard woman. Yeah, it's not a big deal. 
Yeah, I know. Um, I she is uh, so Sherry Moon Zombie is like the last one that escapes because of course she is. And yeah, and then I just started thinking, uh, oh, this this last scene is just the end of the gray. I haven't and seen that. I, me, it's good. Um, but my, me and I are just going, okay, if they end on her, she lives. If we end on him, she dies. And it does end on her, but in a way that makes it look like, oh, no, no, she's definitely dead. Yeah, how could she have? Because apparently he's just like a dirty cheater because she technically won. Yeah, yeah because she escaped. But then he just like goes after and kills her anyway. Yeah, like just drives behind her, gets out slowly, says some vile dialogue, and cut. <laughs> Something that I thought, again, I was like, I was way more interested in the three people running everything. Like, when they become just, like, regular people at the end and leave, I was like, I want to know what happens after that. Mm-hmm. Does Malcolm McDowell just, like, go and, like, work at a grocery store? Like, what are their lives when they're not doing this weird shit? That's a good question. Uh, cause like in the running man, we know what they do behind the scenes. Right. But with like Rob Zombie shit, we just kind of get that that's what they do. It, it, it doesn't it, matter again. Like he doesn't, he doesn't care. Yeah. They just, they just stand there waiting for things to happen. what do you think of the movie starting off with a quote by Franz Kafka? I don't know who that is, so I didn't even care. He wrote The Metamorphosis. Uh, never read it. Uh, the quote is, A first sign of the beginning of, un- the first sign of the beginning of understanding is the wish to die. I don't know how that what? connects to the I movie, but whatever. I don't whatever. even know what that's supposed to mean. You know, this movie was produced by Saban Films, who did Power Rangers. I noticed that. I was like, oh my god, it's a Power Rangers guy. That would have been that better weird. if it was like the Power yeah. Rangers versus the Carnies at the end. Yeah. And then like Malcolm McDowell could form into a Malcolm McDowell Megazord. <laughs> hmm. Who's your favorite character in the whole movie? Um... Malcolm McDowell. Who's your favorite head? My favorite head? Probably Sex and Death. I thought they were fun. <laughs> they lasted the, as, the, as fun as this movie can get. They die the quickest, Kate. <laughs> they do die the quickest, which is probably why I like them the most, because I didn't have time to get to know them. They All the heads die very easily, and they also, like, if they have a loved one, they'll immediately drop what they're doing to be like, don't hurt them! Yeah, which, like, leads me to believe that they, like, they are villains, or, like, they are victims in this game, but they they come out like fucking WWE characters. <laughs> like, so y- you don't know if, like, they're they're lying, or if they're victims, or what, what what's going on. You don't really know. And it, the movie doesn't care. How do you compare this to other Rob Zombie movies you've seen? Um, probably my least favorite. Okay. Because uh, for me, it's like, of the ones I've seen. I haven't seen every single one of them. I think I've missed like maybe two or three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Double's Rejects is my number one. Halloween is my number two. Uh, Thousand Corpses is probably number three. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie than Halloween two. Okay, actually, you know he he made a movie called The Lords of Salem, which like I guess people didn't really like. Um, yeah, but that was like <clears throat> different for him. He strayed out of his like comfort zone kind of in making that. Mm-hmm. And then didn't make a lot of money, so 31 was, uh, it was crowdfunded. Mm-hmm. And he said that he made the movie he basically felt like his fans wanted him to make. And I feel like it shows. Yeah, it, it does, because it, it's, it's vile without having any sort of depth. Because, uh-huh. like, 
for me, the devil's rejects is vile, but it's exactly what it needs to be. Cause it's a deep, good story. It's like, it's just a chase scene right. of these killers trying to lay low. I, it, it's a good movie. You know, it, it's, it's, if it was handled any other way, it wouldn't be entertaining. And I feel like, you know, I, I do like his films. I like the way he makes his movies look. I like actors that he casts and he, he makes fun characters. Um, yeah, he does. But I feel like 31, like, again, none of the heads are memorable, I guess, except for, I mean, you know, Doomhead is the one I guess they want you to think is the coolest, but yeah. he's not interesting. He's really not like, cause he's, he's just one note. I'm an absolute badass. Right. And you can tell that Rob Zombie thinks he's a badass, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't know. It, it's just a gross, cheap movie with really unlikable characters. I try to write down like what each character, like what their goal was outside of like not dying. The David mm-hmm. Grohl guy, I guess wants to like expand his the carnival acts but other than that none of them have like goals or drives they don't matter and even yeah even then like his motivation is i want to make a big gorilla show but he only ever described one scene right like so what your your show is five minutes long i don't understand (laughs) (laughs) yeah it yeah, like this movie's got it's got no depth. It's got no it's got nothing underneath the surface. It's just it it just doesn't it feels like a movie made by a guy who doesn't care anymore. Exactly. And and that's it's kind of a shame too, because like I like he Rob Zombie's an acquired taste, but I love that taste. Tastes like dust and blood. It yeah, and I like that. Do you have anything else to say about it? Uh, not really. I mean, it's just it just feels like I don't know. It just it just feels like a guy who's making a movie because. Uh huh. It. it other than that, it doesn't really feel like he wanted to even do this. Yeah, it, and you haven't seen his most recent one, right? Three from Hell? No, I have not. I I don't know if I want to. That's the Devil's Rejects but sequel? I know I'm going, yeah, uh, yeah. It's bad. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of over him. I'm kind of feel like I didn't like Three from Hell. 31 I thought was lazy. I'm kind of just, I don't know. I don't care about him anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't think I do either. What's it's a next? Shame. It's a it, it's a shame. Uh so, um there I've I've seen a lot of movies over the past couple weeks. Um I've seen the entirety of the original Planet of the Apes movies. Uh huh. Uh, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is my favorite one. That one is badass. The one after that sucks. But it's just boring. So I can't really do that. You know, so I'm trying, I was trying to think of a movie that is at least fun to watch in its badness. Okay. Um, and I haven't seen this movie before. Oh god! And I, I, I heard that it was bad, but it's an action movie. So how? Like, it's not like it's a comedy where the worst thing a, a comedy can be is not funny. Mm-hmm. It's an action movie. So the worst thing an action movie can be is not really believable. <laughs> you know, um, and like this is kind of like one of those made by committee movies. So. Our next movie we're going to watch is the Conan the Barbarian remake. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that have Aquaman in it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this. Fucking Cal Drogo. That, that, that's solid. I, I respect your pick. Thank you. All right, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 
hey, if it's bad, it might be fun. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Once you have you seen all the old Bar- Conan movies? Uh, yeah, I've uh, uh, what Barbarian, Destroyer, Red Sonia, if you want to count it. <laughs> I've only seen the first movie. Uh, Conan the Barbarian's great. Destroyers, you know, eh, it's fine. Okay. Uh, Red Sonia feels like the script was gutted in the like in the third act, so you don't. Like things are going, and then just something happens, and you don't. It's like he blinked. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Man. Eh. All right. Awesome. Uh, Conan the Barbarian remake is on Hulu. Awesome. <laughs> Who else is in it? Um. Let me see here. And then Barbarian. I'm gonna go to you, uh, IMDB because uh, Hulu doesn't like to say who's in anything. And the Barbarian. We got Jason Momoa, Ron Perlman, Our- Rose McGowan, yep. Stephen Lang, Rachel Nichols, Rob Sapp, who you'll recognize, but not by not with the name. <laughs> um, he's the guy in the Longest Yard remake who gets his nose broken. I haven't seen that. Um, let's see, anyone else? Uh, no one else I recognize. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Should be good. Uh, So, back at it with the recordings. Hopefully. And, yeah, I hope, I hopefully we all got... What's weird is like I say we got time, but I feel like I wake up and then the day is immediately almost over. Me too, because I wake up at six p.m. Yeah, I've been waking up at like ten and doing nothing for like three hours. <laughs> but I feel like I have no free time because I can't go outside or do much of anything. Right. So I just waste my time inside. Yeah, it's 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 kind of shitty. Perfect time for us to do this, then. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I have to. I have to talk about the director of Conan the Barbarian's filmography real quick because okay. it's. Pre- <laughs> you, you'll go. Oh, I can see it. The Friday Thirteenth remake. I, I like that movie. Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Didn't see it. Fucking. It's. It's incredibly milk toast. Wait, is that the one with like the giant tiger or something? Um no, that's 10,000 BC. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh this is with Carl Urban and Clancy Brown. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um we got Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake from 2003, which I like. I do too. We got a whole bunch of music videos. So like and poorly lit green tinted movies. Poorly lit green tinted movies that are also just plagued with green screen. And the characters will all be moist looking, I'm assuming. Yeah, probably glistening in sweat. Right, there we go. Um Yeah, it seems like this guy's pretty much just a, a a music video director. Like he's done a bunch of Faith No More. Um he did some George Michael stuff, High Five. Yeah, like a lot of music videos that we've all seen. I'm sure it'll be it'll be good. Maybe. <laughs> well, until next time. Until next time. Bye everybody. Bye.